Dot World is the top selling game in the world right now, with 1.2 million users playing as of this morning, only 48 hours after release. It's gained immense popularity because it's similar to Pokemon, but with some differences such as an emphasis on crafting materials, maintaining a base, and years long requested feature, physically beating the shit out of them yourselves. Time will only tell if this game has enough content to make a lasting impact, but as of right now, the game is very, very good and well polished for an early access title, and I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up disrupting the survival genre altogether. When the game starts, you're given a simple character creation tool in which you choose sex, face, hair, voice, and of course, leg. You choose a respawn point that cannot be changed and the adventure begins thereafter. My friends had already been playing for a few hours, so our encampment was already somewhat set up and running, with our slaves already giving it their all. Where most survival games have the player spend extended periods at base creating materials, Pal World allows you to delegate the work to your captured creatures, who fortunately are non-union. Specific pals can do specific work, so it's up to you to figure out which ones can mine, kindle fire, power water wheel, or give dome to a tree. You can prioritize what type of work needs to be done based on your needs. Fire pals are useful for baking food, which is needed to keep both your character and creatures fed. Where creatures with claws are better suited for mining, grass types for harvesting, and etc. Because the game allows you to automate crafting, you can spend more time out in the wild exploring, collecting, and killing. In the wild, you're able to engage in combat and collect or kill other pals with the pals you have already collected. Or you can just punch them in the face. It doesn't feel really bad. Lights out. If it doesn't feel right to put your hands on these friendly furries, I get it. And that's why the game has generously offered the option to shoot them instead. As far as weapons go, I only was able to craft a bow and arrow during my short time playing, but I did opt to just fight with the pals instead as they ended up doing more damage. However, as you get further down the progression tree, it's likely that the weapons do become more useful as you unlock sharper blades and firearms with rubbed off serial numbers. After dealing enough damage to a pal in the wild, you can throw one of your pal spears out to catch. A transparent graphic will display on screen immediately as you wait to see whether or not it's a successful kidnapping. Speaking of firearms, all pals have unique abilities that can be unlocked as you progress. One of the early unlocks is tied to Fox Sparks, which is a wish version of Vulpix. Once you have crafted a harness for it, you can then hold it by its neck and choke flame out of its mouth. This did a ton of damage when I used it and went on a significant cooldown afterwards. The most important ability I unlocked during my three and a half hour stint was by far the land mount. Several pals seem to have this ability and I happened to unlock it on Dire Howl, a wolf thing. The mount increases your speed on foot significantly to the point where I would stress unlocking it as early as possible. It opens the game considerably and makes travel much less of a burden. Beyond PAL abilities, you'll also notice that PALs learn new moves for combat as they level up, which is done via experience gained through combat, crafting, and exploration. Your character also levels up alongside your PALs, which is necessary to unlock your craftables such as weapons, armors, gadgets, and new machinery for your base. You unlock these with technology points, which are given to you whenever you level up or find fast travel statues littered throughout the map. You can use your technology points when you open up the main menu. Leveling up also allows you to allocate stat points to basics like strength, HP, defense, and weight. When I say weight, I don't mean the Ozempic kind, but the weight of the items in your inventory. If it gets too heavy, your character will move slowly or not at all. However, items can be stashed at base and chests to lighten your load. Because catching pals is naturally engaging, progression feels smooth, and nothing ever feels like a slog or a grind. The world is vast, and besides the pals that inhabit the surface, there are dungeons and caves swarming with other species as well as boss pals. These bosses can be captured just like any other, albeit with larger health bars and smaller capture rates. Some of the designs of these creatures are blatant ripoffs of Game Freak's IP, but it works because the whole thing is rooted in satire. Additionally, some of the originals are wonderfully done, with some standouts including an elephant whose trunk resembles a teapot, a penguin pirate, and an oversized alpaca. Some of the designs here make you wonder how Nintendo had to beat them to the... Punch. Animations are equally impressive, with combat often looking vibrant and colorful due to the moves flying around from each pal, 
and the demeanor of each pal in and out of battle fully expresses their personality. So what didn't I like? At night, it's insanely dark. You can't see unless you have a torch or a fire pal to illuminate the path forward. This is probably intentional, so I'm not knocking the game for it, but it's something to be wary of. I ran into a few bugs while playing, but nothing game-breaking. Sometimes my pal would not attack other pals in the wild right away unless I went in Mike Tyson first. Other times, it would attack no problem. Our pals were starving to death at one point because they couldn't figure out their way around our base to go and fucking eat. This led to one of our guys getting an ulcer and depression within 30 minutes of one another. We never really figured out how to cure the depression, but he hasn't jumped yet, so there's no point in paying for it. Besides a few bugs and being afraid of the dark, I would say that I've had a ton of fun with Power World so far. I'll caveat that I played this with my friends in a server that allows it to 32 players. Right now, the standard default is four players when you're playing on Steam or Xbox and one of the official servers. I would definitely say that the number of people playing and who I was playing with lent to how much I was enjoying the game. If you go in solo, the experience is likely to be enjoyable for Pokemon enthusiasts or anyone that's a fan of the survival genre. However, if you're playing with friends, this is a game that I can absolutely recommend to everybody. What are our Pokemon has an ulcer? I didn't know that. Wait, <laughs> our Pokemon has an ulcer? Yeah, uh, what are we doing about that? What are we doing? Why is there a hot spring? No one said you. anything about that. No, we have that. one. We have one. We need, we need like guys got an ulcer. You guys are just out there just having fun. <laughs> <laughs>